Evening, ladies and gentlemen. Coming to you from the studio here at Casper Drive in Cody, Wyoming. Uh, approximately 12, 11 in the morning. Been thinking about things for a little while. Anyway, um, couldn't figure out what song I was going to play. Um, shout out to Jess down in Texas. I hadn't heard from uh, his friend in a long time, so we, uh, we got to speak on the phone for a while tonight. Had a great conversation. Got to catch up. It was really cool. So um, I'm going to play a little tune that um, I used to always uh, play when she was around back in the day. So anyway, we have our little music interlude to start things out. But not so pushy If you wanna become an American Sweet love to me And if you're the type of girl Don't do anything in peace Maybe then I realize You ain't got what I need To keep my soul alright It keeps me up high above Yes, make a good reason To come question your love It keeps my soul alright It keeps me up high above One make a girl Let you come give me some free love And then they morning Just to make it feel alright Yeah, make a girl Let you come give me some free love And then they morning Time she make me feel alright Send me gotta be waiting Till the day turns to night Cause in the evening Time she make me feel alright Girl, you got me wishing This would happen every night Said if you want to get with me Girl, this this is what you'll find But a man who's got the type of moves To make you lose your mind You tell me that your loving's true On each and every day You tell me that you've got the type of loving here to stay Sweet honey Yeah, there we go. That was an oldie, but a goodie. The boys from Slightly Stupid. Can't even go wrong there. Kyle, Miles, Carl, Ramo, Della, the fellas, the stupid boys. Miss you in them live. Hopefully soon. I'd like to get about here to Wyoming. That'd be kind of cool if we could do that at some point in time. But who knows what the possibilities of that are. Anyway, here we are tonight. Um, got a lot of things going on. We've got um, fuel shortages. We're talking um, employment issues, which is something that we're going to get into a little bit. I'm not talking about what it is that you want to do in life and not what it is that you think you're required to do. Um I can tell you this, from my experience, it, it, you are going to be much better off if you gamble on yourself. I'm not saying that you shouldn't have a job. But as, um, employment is not the end-all, be-all solution to your fulfillment in life, to your happiness. Your sadness might, might contribute to your sadness quite a bit, um, in my opinion, because I know that when I was gainfully employed, those are some of the worst times ever. Just sitting there punching a the clock all day, making money for somebody else. Yeah, come on. It's silly. Can everybody be self employed? I don't know. I mean, the way the system's set up right now, it's, it's doubtful. Um, because the rich and the powerful and the elite, they need employees. Um, what they're basically doing is mining our children. I mean, let's, let's, come on. Let's, let's be matter of fact about this. Look what your children do in school. Can, can I go to the bathroom? Can I say something? It's Miss Krabappel. You know, that's just not 
like I said before, no slight on any teachers or educators or anything like that, but we are not teaching our kids to be free thinkers. We are creating little clones, little mini-me's, little factory workers that have to ask to go to the bathroom in a hall pass. Don't think for yourself at all. You know, the, the, the kids are not being taught to think for themselves. It's, it's, it's just the truth. But what's the solution? I don't know. It's, it's difficult. I think as parents, we probably have to do a better job. Quite, quite honestly. As parents, we are your your children's, you know, heroes. Where who they look up to, we're we are the ones that take care of them. The state's trying to um, manipulate that. They're trying to manipulate us. I mean, at this point in time, right now, if we want to talk about employment, there are more jobs available out there than there have been in quite some time, and nobody wants to work. Now, why do you think that is? Yeah, okay, you play Jeopardy, okay, who who won? When you can get paid more money for doing nothing and sitting at home than you can by going to work, then who in the fucking right mind is going to go to work? I mean, I mean, raise your hands. How many of y'all out there dislike your job? Like, you kind of fucking makes you miserable every morning when you go in there. Like, you feel like maybe, I don't know, Maybe you're selling yourself out, selling yourself short, or whoring yourself out. I mean, because basically, I mean, if you're you're working a nine to five in a job you hate, then you're basically a, a you're basically a prostitute. Let's be honest about the thing. I mean, because you know you got to pay them bills. You gotta pay them bills. You know, I mean, you know, your masters want their money, and if you don't pay your masters, then guess what? Then you're, you know, you're going to be ostracized. You're going to lose, you know, all these wonderful things that we have, you know. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is if you're punching clock, you're out there making money for somebody else. You know, it's treated like you're fortunate enough to have such and such position with such and such corporation and you spend most of your day hating life looking at the watch Hmm. when can I get out of here trying to cut out early trying to take extra time on breaks if it was so rewarding would would you be worried about breakdown lunchtime no you wouldn't you'd be in there like hey ram this thing through we'll get it done this is great this is rewarding work This this is a lot of fun really doing something that's worthwhile. No. You're sitting there and you're making money for some old fucking man back there in the corner office. He hates his life too. His wife hates him. His kids hate him. You hate him. I mean, really, everybody hates him. And um, if anybody's ever seen that rice experiment that's done, then you, you can understand what those type of sentiments do to somebody. Even if you're the boss, if you're in a position where you're hated all day, then you're going to turn old and moldy and spiteful and hateful and miserable. And you're going to live a life probably not worth even living. Yeah, you might have a house. You might have a sign right there by your car where you get to park your car. Reminds me of the uh, the Will Ferrell character where he's having the... Um, the argument at dinner time. Yelling at him about I I drive a Dodge <laughs> I drive a Dodge Stratus. You don't talk to me that way. And do you drive a Dodge Stratus? Where do you park at work? Are you happy with where you park at work? Do you want an upgrade? Maybe you don't even want a job. 
I don't think that's what we're seeing happen right now, too. It's like people are done with it. I mean, they're like, what, why? Why go in? I can sit here and make all this money on unemployment, on enjoyment. I could be like this guy and start a fucking podcast. How about that, huh? You could be like this fucking guy right here. Yeah. Who doesn't want to be like me? I'm a guy like me. <laughs> I'm kind of silly. No, but anyway, um, gas shortages is one of the things that's out there. People don't panic by it. Right? It, it was just some hackers. Um, we're going to have fuel again. Now, the price of that fuel, I'm not really positive because we have um, Uncle Nick Knack out there, Nick Knack, old McDonald or whatever the fuck his name is, you know, signing shit and, you know, talking through his fucking horse teeth and mush mouth bullshit and running his neck about, the, you know, whatever he doesn't know about. And then you got cackling Kamala right there in the background ready to come in and take over things. But, you know, we've got free money coming out. We've got more free money coming. That's what I hear. I don't know. Somebody said that. There we go again. Another stimulus package. Hey, kids. Welcome to more debt for the rest of your life. You've got no chance of doing anything except what Uncle Sam tells you to do because you have not been born yet, but you are $30 trillion in debt. Bienvenido a la máquina. Welcome to the machine, kids. Um, I might contemplate having children. Any of you young adults out there who are thinking that children is, you know, a good idea at this point in time. I'm not saying that's not. I feel bad for my son. He's 13 and, and he's $30 trillion in debt. Sometimes I feel sorry for myself. I just turned 45 and I'm also part of that debt. Now, what have I incurred some debt over my life? Sure. Of course. Who, who hasn't? You have to. The only way that our fiscal system works is through debt. There is no money. There is no currency without debt. Dun, dun, dun. News break. It's all you don't know who don't know. That's why we have stimulus packages. That's why we have interest rates. And that's, and I can't get, I, this just drives me nuts. Everybody, all the pundits, everybody I see online is talking about how the Fed is printing money. Again, People, we have discussed this on the show. I have discussed this. There is not any printing of money that is going on. It's a, it's a keyboard stroke. It's as simple as me hitting the mute button. Period. That's it. I mean, it's just like, I know a lot of people won't remember this movie, but it's a wonderful life, right? Jimmy Stewart, or that. This is the same scenario. Everybody goes in the bank to get their money. And there's old Jimmy Stewart saying, well, I don't have your money. It's in Fred's house and it's in Jim's house and it's in Carl's business. We don't have your money. Well, why not? I put the money in there. You don't. You can't give it to me. And I've discussed this, about, you know, going in the bank and, and having to call ahead and be like, hey, you know what? I've got a, I've got a check drawn on your bank it's for 15 grand. The funds are there. Now I want somebody to go into that vault and make sure that, that you got the cash on hand because I'm coming in to cash the check. I don't want to put it in my account. I want the money. Oh, boy, that just really upsets them. They do not like that one single bit. It pisses them off. They get angry with you. They try and delay you. You probably end up with a bank officer coming out trying to talk you out of taking the cash. You know, I mean, why? It's my money. The funds are there. It's drawn on your bank. Why is it a problem for me to take it? Ask the question, people. The answers might scare you if you think critically about it a little bit. I think there's a lot of scary answers out there right now. So we've got... This, that, and the other thing going on. Um, 
Anybody see Elon Musk on Saturday Night Live? No, me either. Sorry. Dud. Didn't feel like watching a guy that's worth $180 billion um, dress up like uh, Mario Kart or whatever it was that he did. I mean, the guy can do whatever he wants with his money. Whatever. Let's shoot some more cars into outer space and let's watch people of Los Angeles go, you know, further and further and further into homelessness. Let's do that. I mean, because what could outer space use more than another fucking car getting shot up there with a fucking crash test dummy in it? You know, it doesn't really cost much money. Not for Elon. $20 billion would take care of homelessness. Hey, where you at, Elon? Where you at? Bezos. Buffett. Bill, soon to be divorced from Melinda Gates. Who's refusing to uh, give the vaccine to the poor nations? You know, and the vaccine, that's a whole other fucking stupid can of worms. Does it make any sense? Okay, let me know. Anybody who's had the jab or the dual jab or the triple jab or whatever the fuck it is that you've had to have. Why in the world does it make any sense to punish the people who haven't had it? I mean, if it's that bad without it, aren't they going to be punished enough? I mean, if you've had the jab, then what? what's your concern? Why, why, who, what's, what's the matter? Who wears a mask? Doesn't wear, who has, doesn't have the jab? Has it, this is an exercise of tyranny. That fucking stupid Fauci is out there again doing the same shit saying that um, even if you have the jab now you're allowed in certain outdoor areas to not wear the mask according to the cookie gnome however the cookie gnome also has his places where you are still required to wear a mask now if you got the jab why if I don't have the jab, who cares? It's your decision. It doesn't matter, right? If the thing really fucking works. If the thing really works. And I'm not talking about the thing is in the Declaration of Independence, not Joe Biden's thing. I'm talking about the, the vaccination, the, the, you know, the, the mRNA um. DNA modifying thing that everybody's got to get stuck in their arm. Now, this, this fucking Fauci, right? If you ask yourself the question, well, what, what happened to the flu this year? Where did, where, where did the flu go? What happened to the flu? Why, why are we not talking about old influenza A or B or whatever? Where, where did he go? He was, yeah, had enough. He thought, well, this COVID shit, you know, if I can't compete with this, I'm just going to fucking take my balls and go. Is that what happened? I mean, I, I've, I've not seen a thing about flu deaths. So what, what happened to that? Hmm. Weird, huh? I mean, it's just amazing how dumb, I keep coming back to this, how dumb we are. Nobody, it doesn't seem like many people think about this shit. You got Onion Dick out there and he's saying the reason that the flu numbers are down is because everybody wore the mask, right? Okay, so why do you still got to wear it after you get the vaccine? Vaccine, no vaccine. Taking it in your own hands, right? You're making your own choice. If you're an adult, you're a grown-ass person. And then we got to come after Joe, Joe, uh, Joe Rogan. I mean, come on. I mean, he told healthy 21-year-olds not to get it. Guess what? I just turned 45. Am I in the uh, demographic of people susceptible to it? I probably am. And guess what? I've had it. I think I've even had it twice. And here I said, did it suck? It sucked. Would 
would have would my ninety year old grandmother have lived through it? Probably not. However, there wasn't much that she was going to live through at ninety years old, and that's the fact. I mean, you know, how about all the people in the nursing homes in New York City? What happened to that? I mean, where'd that go? Is that fucking Cuomo still in office? Probably, yeah. You know, out there diddling his, you know, female assistants and, you know, being Chester the molester. You know, just like Biden, sniffing hair. It's pathetic what we've allowed to happen. It's fucking pathetic. And it's only getting worse. It's only going to get worse. Up on the northern border of the country, at all the rail yards, you've got bunks of lumber stacked up. And lumber has gone 300% through the roof. Um, From what I saw earlier, we've got 17 states that are in a state of emergency over a fuel shortage. So you've got people that are panic buying fuel. I could understand doing such, I guess, but I mean, the fact of the matter is that you're going to run out. And so then what? Just be the last one. You want to just be the last one to run out? How about a solution? What is the solution? We don't get solutions in this society. We don't. We don't get cures. We don't get solutions. We get further and further in debt. That's what we get. So what's the solution? This is where I keep coming back to. That's why I put hashtag walk away on almost everything. It's my thought that it's time to walk away from all this stuff. We've allowed a small group of people, a very small group of people, to run all of our lives. And it's fucking pathetic. It's absolutely pathetic. We can't even think for ourselves can't think outside the box of working a shitty cheese job going to the fucking college and getting inundated with a bunch of bullshit that these fucking idiot professors have been inundated with and they just babble it back to you and you sit there and you write down your notes and you regurgitate it to your kids and you go out and you live a mediocre life you go out and you do what you don't want to do day in and day out for all of the meaningful, productive years of your life. To me, that seems like the alcoholic's definition of insanity. I don't know. I mean, just do the same thing over and over again. Expect different results. Work a shitty cheese job for 30 fucking years of your life. Go to retire and find out your 401k has been invested in these AAA securities that are, mm, they're junk. Get taxed on the money that you made that you've already been taxed on once before, but hey, get taxed on it again. Mm-hmm. And where does your tax dollar go? They're like, oh, well, what about the roads and the bridges? Goes to the military industrial complex, goes to bombing brown people, goes to Raytheon, it goes to Boeing, it goes to all these major corporations that are too big to fail. They're not allowed to fail. Where did all these trillions in stimulus money go? It's the same fucking thing I come back to over and fucking over. And it's really getting a little redundant and obnoxious and it's annoying. I'd rather talk about what you're doing, what the kids are doing. What gives you joy? What makes you happy? The reason I do the things that I do is because they make me happy. 
I don't have a job. Because I don't want to punch in. I don't want to punch out. I don't want some guy in a stuffed shirt telling me that I get to take break from 10 to 10.15, lunch from 12 to 12.30. Do your TPS reports, punch in, punch out. Hey, this life is too goddamn short for that shit. We don't know, we, we don't know how much time we got. None of us do. And you can say God, or God has you, whatever. If you believe in God, then I guess what if that's what if that's what works for you, then go ahead. But I mean, I I, I really don't see that as a reasonable justification for anything in life. Although it seems like a, a, a large number of people do use their belief in this religion as a motivating factor in what they do from day to day because we're so fucking scared of death. Well guess what? You're gonna you're gonna kick the bucket. Guess what? I'm gonna kick the bucket. Everybody kicks the fucking bucket. I'd like to at least, you know, know that I decided which bucket I'm going to kick. I mean, it, it could end for any of us on a trip to Walmart, trip to the gas station, trip to the post office, anywhere. The fucking car could blow up. You could be like Elvis and be taking a shit and have a cardiac arrest and they find you on the, you know, the Lincoln log halfway out your butt crack. You never know. I mean, why... Why, oh why, continue in the pursuit of something that makes you absolutely miserable? You might as well do something that you enjoy. I'll tell you what, because it's going to help the people around you. It's going to help you. It's going to help your community. It's going to help society as a whole. I mean... I don't know. Sound off. Let me know. Who's happy out there working a shitty cheese job? Who's happy out there punching and punching out? I know of a few people. There's a few I know that um, truly do enjoy their gainful employment. However, for the most part, the people I know, uh, what you'd call working stiff, they don't fucking like their job. They don't gain satisfaction of it. They're not mentally stimulated. They're not. They're not. Um, they're not growing as a as a human being. They're stifled. It, it, there's the, the options for creativity are non-existent. And yeah, I'm an idiot. I'm a spud. Whatever. I'm the first one to admit I don't know shit. But admitting that you don't know shit is probably the first step to um. At least trying to learn something. I build what I want. I do what I want. I'm, you know. Sometimes it makes me some money. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I just sit here and run my neck at you people. And by you people, I don't mean anything derogatory towards anybody. Okay, so let's not get all triggered and woke. Another thing I got to listen to earlier today, some jackass on YouTube talking about wokeness trying to explain it well first of all you got to be grammatically correct when you're defining something if i'm awake i am awake all right i'm looking at you right now am i woke i am awake did something wake me up today perhaps was i woke up because the cat brought a live animal into the house and was destroying it in the kitchen perhaps i was woke up by that does that make me woke Hmm, no, that means I'm awake. I don't know. Is being awake when you're asleep? What are dreams? One of those. There's some of these hypothetical questions you got to ask yourself from time to time. Everybody's woke up from... Uh, oh, what did I say? Woke. <laughs> Everybody's woke up from a dream, right? That you thought was 100% real. 
When I was in prison, I'd have this dream that I got out and got on a bus, stopped in Barstow, ran in all my old friends, jumped in the truck with them. It was my old truck from when I had in college. And instead of taking the bus back and going and checking in with probation, so we we go to Vegas and, and start carrying on like we used to. And when I would become awake in prison, I would look around and see that I was still in prison. And I'd be in a cold sweat and I'd be happy that I was there. Now, does that make that dream not real? What was that dream? Why did it happen over and over again? What is going on there? What's happening in dreams? I mean, I don't know that anybody can really define that. But it kind of makes you wonder. It's like, uh, is, is, is that the real world? Or is this bullshit, nonsensical, farcical, garbly goop out here reality? I mean, you got to think about it, like who, what kind of um, mentality does it take to run for president? Most of the people I know, being personally, I, I, I would never want to even pursue that, much less spend a hundred million dollars on it. So I could go be bossed around by the CIA get lists of who I'm going to put on my cabinet and it doesn't matter if I'm a D or an R, it's still going to be the same Steve Mnuchin's and Turd Ferguson, you know, the same cats that regardless of whether you're talking Obama, George Bush Jr., Orange Guy, or um, Old MacDonald, whatever his name is, fucking screwhead, wiffle ball neck, I mean, why would you even want to put yourself there? I mean, you're looking at like a borderline personality disorder if you want to run for president, I think. Maybe I'm wrong. But I think that most of you that listen to anything that I happen to babble about probably are not in the mindset that that would be something that you would uh, pursue at all or wish to pursue or would bring you any kind of reward or pleasure or anything. Sit there and wag your finger. Sit there and talk to like this fucking idiot. Talk to a room full of nobody. I mean, I'm convinced that most of the time he's up there babbling. That there's nobody even in this. Who knows if he might be behind a green screen or something. I don't know. It just seems like nobody asks questions and everybody's so happy that the orange man is gone and that we and then, and then the fact that we got to sit here and we got to think about these things anyways is so stupid. If we didn't have these fuckheads out there, I think we'd probably all be better off for it. And then you got the media. I mean, they're they're quite possibly the biggest um, bunch of quacks out there. I mean, you look at this fucking Brian Stelter, whatever that potato head's name is. Sorry, didn't mean to use potato head. I know we're discontinuing potato head, so I could probably... Onion head, Stelter, look at that guy. Who listens to that guy? Hmm. Or Lemon, or Anderson Cruper, or Wolf Blitzkrieg. If you want to get any kind of real fucking news, you need to be tuning into guys like uh, the dudes from the Gray Zone, uh, Aaron Monte, Max Blumenthal, guys like fucking Jimmy Dore, uh, Tim Poole, Kim Iverson, um, Glenn Greenwald. Look at Glenn. This guy is like the journalist of our time. Started the Intercept, and he leaves the Intercept behind and walks away from it. This man has, I mean, he's he's done more for journalism, true journalism, than, I mean, who, we, Julian Assange. And this, this fucking dipshit, you know, he should have got a pardon from Trump. That was disgusting. You know, absolutely disgusting that Trump did not pardon Assange. I mean... 
what a disappointment. He he pardons fucking little Wayne. What? But you you, you let Julian Assange just fucking rot. Fuck you, Trump. Some fucking weak, spineless horse shit. And Trump, you know that Julian Assange was a major influence in your ass getting elected because he fucking showed the world what the fuck that piece of shit Podesta and Hillary Clinton were up to. And that's and, and then we also got to get into that too. All right. Where did Julian Assange get his information? I'm not going to say. But anybody who's got half a brain on their head knows that the young man who ended up dead on the side of the fucking street in Washington, D.C. with not a single thing, single thing stolen from him, even though it was labeled as, as a robbery, it was probably his source. At the fucking Russians. But blame Russia. Ooh. Emergency, emergency. Everyone to get from street. Anybody ever see the Russians is coming? It was a movie I grew up watching as a kid. It was older, but it was uh, it, it was entertaining for sure. And we're still doing the same thing. And everybody still listens to that goofy ass fucking Rachel Maddow run her neck about the fucking Russians. Everything is the fucking Russians. That goofy ass woman. She, uh, Jesus Christ. And to say that's a journalist, what a slap in the face. It's just dumb. Anyway, I'm trying to think of something as a positive note. We got inflation going on. We got fuel shortages. We got, you know, Palestinian people being just executed by Israelis. But we got to have Israel's back. You know, we got to put our stimulus money. It doesn't go to eradicating homeless here. We got to put it into their inter inter ballistic missile program over there in Israel because they don't, um, you know, they ain't got enough money. <laughs> And all of us are so stupid. We just sit here and just ask when our next $1,400 check is going to come. When's it coming? Oh, here's the other thing that came out, too. Um, there was a paper released from the uh, Chinese military that directly links um, biological warfare, you know, to man-made coronaviruses, and it dates back five years ago. So for any of you out there that are stupid enough to think, and I'm not saying it was intentionally released, okay? I'm not going to get into that whole thing. But there's documents that have been released, and the media in, in this country is not saying anything about it. But the likes of Fauci and the CCD, as our fearless leader would call the CDC and the NIH and our government, is implicit in investing in these things, especially in the lab where this supposedly came from. That's, and I'm sorry for any small business owners out there like me or people that have lost their jobs, lost their lives, lost their livelihood, lost family. Lost confidence, lost hope. All of our worst nightmares are kind of um, coming true here with what's going on. And it makes me ask, when are we going to do something about it? You don't got to be fucking woke, but you do need to be awake. And you need to seek answers and you need to seek solutions and not get sucked into this bullshit because everything in this country changes on a daily basis. And there's always just these stupid ass media stories that are blocking you from what is really going on behind the scenes. And we get so up in arms and we get so wound up, we want to fight with one another. And we want to throw out the, you know, racist jargon, you know, and use racism and. Oh, God, what is the fucking stupid terminology they're using now? 
some retarded bunch of, oh, no, no, I said retarded. I'm very sorry that I used a word of the English language. My bad. I guess I'm not woke enough. I don't know. People, if you've had a chance, um, I do have a GoFundMe page out there for my son's mother. Um, all the proceeds are going to a foundation that I'm creating in her name, and it's going to go to um, trying to do something to help with mental illness. And I'm going to keep bringing it up. Um, if you can donate, that's awesome. If you can't, I totally understand. You know, I'm not trying to grift or panhandle or anything like that. I'm just trying to do something um, in her memory that might help somebody else. So I'll put a link to that at the end of this episode. And um, even if you just give it a like, whatever, give the episode a like, subscribe to the channel. It doesn't hurt you. It doesn't cost you anything. I'm not asking for money. I'm going to have merch out here soon. Um, got a lot of really cool t-shirt designs and, and hats and things like that. Might do some coffee cups or something of that nature. I don't know. I'm not sure. We are going to do hats and t-shirts though. Maybe some hoodies, but that'll be coming. So keep your eye out for that. And I will probably take a portion of those proceeds and put them towards, um, the foundation for Ashley. And it's not necessarily, it's in her name. It's not for her, obviously, because once somebody's gone, they're gone. So you can't do anything for them. But, but what I, what I can do is, is try to help somebody else, you know, and you can do the same. You can do the same thing in your own, your own families, your own lives, your own circle of friends. Cause I guarantee almost everybody out there has been affected by mental illness in some way, in some capacity or another. And I don't think we take, um, we take it seriously enough. And it, and it not only hurts the person who it's affecting, but it hurts the people that, you know, are, are family, friends, in relationships with the people that are affected by it. So it's, it's something that we need to, to address. And that's all we're trying to do with that. So there'll be a link to that. Like I said, if, if you can donate, that's awesome. I'll try and come up with something to kick the donors down, you know, whether it be a t-shirt or a hat or something like that once we get the merch. Just, you know, I'm not in this to, to make a bunch of money. Just um, trying to help. I don't want to come off so negative all the time either, so let's try and do something in positivity, I guess. But we do need to wise up. And wising up doesn't mean becoming part of these these woke individuals. It doesn't mean joining Antifa and going out and burning shit down that belongs to other people. That's not what it's about. It's you know, becoming awake is about helping one another and being your brother and your sister's keeper. That's what it's all about. That's it. That's all we got. So on that note, I'm gonna end this tirade. And take me out with a bong hit, Jesus. I guess that's all we can do, right? So anyway, stay up. Be good to one another. Peace out. Love all your ugly mofos. But not so pushy If you wanna be coming and making sweet love to me And if you're the type of girl that do anything in peace Maybe then I'd realize you ain't got what I need to keep my soul alright It keeps me up high above Yes, me God give me sense to come question your love It keeps my soul alright It keeps me up high above Want me girl that you come give me some free love And in the morning time she made me feel alright And you gotta be waiting till the day turns to nothing